when I finished at PMCA in the 70s, uh, early 70s, uh, I got involved with casting polyester resin and did a number of rather monolithic but very colorful and transparent pieces. And then I kind of reached a point, well, I got kind of interested in kinetic work and did my thesis at Portland State, my MFA, with some pieces that had water that moved back and forth through chambers. But uh, all that kind of work was very non-saleable. And I was kind of desperate to do something that was more hands-on where you're really, you know, it's kind of like playing an instrument. You're really, uh, you're, you're playing something, you're producing something right there at that moment, rather than all this very careful uh, preliminary work, for instance, sanding and polishing and that kind of thing. It's just uh, very much craftsmanship, but, but very sort of removed from actually the art itself, in a sense. So that got me involved in watercolor, and I particularly have always loved the plants that grow, uh, particularly the things that grow wild. Uh, not so much garden things, but even things like blackberry vines. I've always found very beautiful. So uh, I've done a lot of that for quite a few years, and this is a piece with the magnolias. This is the very last watercolor I've done. And my production of watercolors has slowed down very much. But I still love the little uh, native blackberry leaves and the various uh, vines that have lost their leaves, too. And they really function as a linear element, as a sense, as a drawn element. And these are scenes actually up the Columbia Gorge on the old highway. This is Letter on Falls. This is uh, Joaquina Falls, kind of my, my version of it. So I still feel the need to do these kinds of things. In fact, I felt very refreshed that I could do these watercolors of very beautiful areas, you might say. That I could find my interpretation of something that can be interpreted just a multiple of times over the years by different artists. So I was, you know, very gratified about that, but also aware that this is kind of 19th century art, too, you might say. <laughs> um, there's so much interest nowadays on an art that goes forward and perhaps is regressing at the same time. Regressing in terms of levels of skill, of drawing skill, of craftsmanship. Uh, but doing some doing things new for the sake of, of the new. And sometimes there is good craftsmanship, but a lot of things nowadays there isn't. And that bothers me. I'm aware that I could be criticized for doing work that looks backwards and is a love, comes out of a love of Cezanne and uh, you know, any number of artists of the late 1800s. But, you know, you can't always help what you feel. You have your feelings. There, there are four etchings on, on that little wall there which really do express that, the love of plants. And then perhaps doing something with the background treatment, the monoprint treatment, that is much more haphazard and random. And putting those two together, there's two actually two separate plates that are printed one right after the other so that uh, there's kind of an unexpected result that, that comes about. So these pieces here, actually these are the, some of the newest things I've done. Just barely got them done in time for the show here. And they're the result, that they're the polyester resin cast with a lot of different colors of dye in them. But they were, cut out of a block that I had done about 30 years ago that had, it was one of the first resin castings I'd done, multiple castings. And I didn't really have the technique very well and the block cracked a lot. It was a block about this high, this wide, and about that deep. 
with lots of fissures through it. So I learned how to cut that. Uh, I cut away, cut it into smaller pieces, cut away the, the flaws and the cracks, and then um, arrange it. And I, I like working with metal too. I like working with brass and aluminum. Part of the reason I like Kirk's work so much too. Um, so I thought, well, maybe I can position some of these colored, these chunks of color in space and use the brass angle to do that. And kind of uh, getting a pleasing arrangement. And of course, each block has several different colors in it. And thinking of it as a color composition in three-dimensional space. They, they are polyester resin cast, cast with multiple colors, multiple castings, mm -hmm. and then cut, cut up. Uh, actually, there were some cracking, so some of the cutting was to eliminate the cracks. Yeah, that, that's a fa the faceted piece, the brownish piece. Uh -huh. All those cuts were made to eliminate the various cracks. Uh -huh. And then I like the, the, uh, the shape. It's a polyhedron, I think you'd call it. A multiple sided. Yeah. yeah. And how, do, how do you add the uh, colors? How do you add the colors on these? Uh, well, the colors were done, uh, they're dyes that are added to the resin. Uh, mixed into the resin, and then after that you add the catalyst that allows the resin to <laughs> cure, to harden, to become a solid. Uh, so first the dye goes in, you can play around with the color, uh, get colors you like. How do you make it so uh, graduated, I mean like, uh, like uh, there's not like a sudden but how do you make it so well, the, the graduated, if you've got two a color here and a color here, mm -hmm. you've got this hot, nice, clean, hard edge. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it like this, you know, because it is a three-dimensional volume, you, you, then you get the, the soft, the soft transition. Mm -hmm. So amazing, uh, yeah. almost like a diamond mm -hmm. or a gemstone or something. Yeah. So as you move around, you see soft edges at times, and then from a certain point of view, you get, you get the nice, clean, hard edge. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thank you.